Our last story today is about entrepreneurs pushing the envelope of innovative agriculture. For most people, when you mention indoor farming, they think of greenhouses or high tunnels. Well, two men in Chicago have built an aquaponics operation inside an old building on the south side of Chicago. Market to Market's David Miller says the operation goes by the name Greens and Gills. Snow on the ground in the Midwest is usually a clear signal that fresh, locally grown produce is no longer available. But for some residents of Chicago, the supply never dries up, even during the most inclement weather. On the south side of the Windy City, David Ellis and his business partner Eric Roth have joined several entrepreneurs who are pushing back against old man winter. This all started with a vision for capitalizing on a need in the marketplace, and that need was um, locally sourced produce. Um, what we saw was just that there was a, a demand for it, and that demand was only growing at an all-time high and only growing. And in the Midwest, the, the source for it was very minimal, almost non-existent, other than the summer months. So for a year-round uh, production company, there was uh, a gap in the marketplace that we felt we could capitalize on. To take advantage of that gap, the pair, along with a silent partner, invested more than $150,000 of their own money to market microgreens, leafy vegetables, and fish under the name Greens and Gills. Their secret weapon against bad weather stopping food production is aquaponics, a closed-loop system that uses water cycled between fish tanks and plant beds. And to maximize the use of their 4,500 square feet of space, a portion of the product is grown on shelves, adding a vertical component to the operation. By being located in Chicago, orders for fresh greens can be filled in as little as a few hours, while the fish are ready for sale every six weeks. Selling the greens has actually been easier than the fish because chefs in the metropolitan area have difficulty balancing the purchase price against the cost of processing. Greens and Gills is the first licensed aquaponics farm in the city of Chicago and just celebrated its first anniversary in January. But long before the first pipes were connected, Ellis poured two years into research and development. The pair credits some of their success to a distinct division of labor. Roth handles nearly all of the production, while Ellis oversees the marketing. We felt that we needed to kind of check our egos at the door, realize that there's certain areas in business that we could, we excel at, and certain areas where we probably fall a little short. And the idea, and I think it's important for any business, is to be the, to recognize those and bring in the team that can really hit on all of Thanks, those man. areas. Yeah, see you tomorrow. The produce from Greens and Gill's vertical fields are marketed through a food distributor as well as directly to upscale restaurants located in Chicago's downtown business loop. Chefs sometimes can be hard to get in touch with, but it's on me to just cold call them. You know, I, I walk in the door, I come in with a cooler with microgreens and fresh cut basils and French sorrel and, and lettuces, and generally their, their first you know, inkling is uh, another vendor calling on me to try to get another product in here. But when I, my opening line is, I'm David Ellis, I co-own and operate an indoor urban farm right here in Chicago, they're usually pretty receptive to at least see what I have and do a tasting and, and talk from there. The chefs at Sienna Tavern were one of Greens and Gill's first customers. Texture, flavor, appearance, everything, start to finish, just phenomenal. They love to experiment and do new things. You know, so every now and then Dave will come around and it's just that it's that one-on-one -on -one interaction with the farmer that goes that much further. Greens and Gills is located in an unlikely place, the basement of a remodeled meatpacking plant. There are seven entrepreneurs like Ellis taking advantage of this green business incubator located on the south side of Chicago called The Plant. Uh, here in Chicago, the average vegetable has come maybe 1,500, maybe 2,000 miles to get here. Uh, that's silly. Uh, we have a talented workforce just on the other side of these walls. We have all of the resources that we need right here in Chicago, and this is where the food is consumed. So why are we transporting it? So the plant exists to figure out new ways to not only grow food in a city, but also how to process it in an efficient way. 
The plant is John Adel's second business incubator. A former television art director, Adel has devoted more than a decade to helping innovative entrepreneurs get their start. Adel's grand plan is to have the tenants create products, process the waste from those products, or provide power for the building in a closed energy loop. I never see a building as a dirty old building. Uh, I walked in and I saw the floor drains and I saw the concrete structure and I saw the beautiful brickwork and I said, well, you know, it, all the mechanical systems may be scrap metal, but you have the core, you have uh, some of the most expensive and important pieces. The concept of growing locally sourced food appealed to urban canopy owner Alex Polterak. The young entrepreneur began volunteering at the plant nearly four years ago and decided the innovative incubator would be a good place to start a business. After investing $100 in some wheatgrass seeds, Polterak began selling product out of his home to area juice bars. In 2011, he brought his new business to the basement of the plant and eventually moved upstairs to a 700 square foot vertical farming space. We call it a for-purpose business. So in the eyes of the IRS, it's still very much a for-profit business that they tax. But at the same time, the way we measure ourselves and what we try to do as a business is very much socially oriented. There's a purpose of how do we feed people, how do we create those economic benefits to the community, and how do we improve community wealth and health and stuff like that. So that's the purpose of the business. And how it Polterak handles it. all of the production and four full-time employees take care of distribution. He continues to sell wheatgrass to juice bars while the rest of the products are sold to members of his community-supported agriculture project and a few restaurants. Polterak says Urban Canopy is making money, but the profits are plowed back into the operation. When I take a step back, I really love it. On a day-to-day, -day, it's still very hard, uh, and it is in this phase of, uh, of growth that's also difficult to manage. And for me, it's definitely very stressful and, uh, and challenging to figure out. When I look back on what collectively our crew has accomplished over the last few years, it's, uh, it's astonishing. Um, and there's still a long, long way to go, so it's exciting to see. Polterak and Ellis plan to stay at the plant indefinitely to supply fresh, locally produced food to Chicago consumers year-round. But there is still plenty of space for a few more small businesses to pull themselves up by their bootstraps and help Adel get one step closer to his dream. For Market to Market, I'm David Miller. You can watch this story on Greens and Gills at the Farm Week website. That's farmweek.msucares.com. You can also watch Farm Week stories on YouTube and Facebook. And we'll have a link to the Market to Market website where you can see the story as well as read the entire script. Again, that's farmweek.msucares.com.